Hey guys, welcome aboard, Devil here. Welcome back to P3D. Uh, this is Fly Simware Learjet 35A, and we are in Las Vegas. Las Vegas, New Mexico. And today we're going to be taking a flight to Las Vegas, Nevada. Let's go ahead and fire up the airplane and we'll be getting out of here. Let's fire up the batteries. Emergency will put into standby. We'll make sure fuel computers are on. We'll put anti-skid on. We'll make sure bleeds are on. Pitch tram is in primary. Jet pumps are on. Cross feed, cross flow, off and closed. Fuel jets and off. Oh, that looks perfect. Let's put the inverters on. We'll put the passenger signs on. Fire up the avionics. And let's go ahead and hook up the ground power unit. There we go. Right, let's take a look at the GPS real quick. This aircraft has support for Flight 1 GTN 750, which will go in place of the GNS over here, as well as the Milves weather radar. And unfortunately, I do not own any of those. They have to be purchased separately. And this is uh, not exactly default GPS. This is a slightly enhanced version of the default GPS enhanced by Fly Simware. Among other things, it has VNAV capability. We'll see if we can... Uh, make use of that let's move on down here cabin air will stay off for now we'll be cruising at 41,000 feet let's dial that into the pressurization panel pressurization is in auto that's fine rate we uh let me just uh, put it roughly here we'll adjust it as required as we climb fuel we got pretty much full tanks All right local altimeter is 3021 we'll be departing runway 14 with the runway heading of 139 let me dial that in as well. We have a few passengers on board uh, and the gross weight adds up to about 17,200 pounds. We'll be taking off uh, with the flaps 8 and our V2 speed will be 137. Let me put this in right here. And since we're just about ready to go, let's go ahead and fire up the engines. We'll go down here. Nav and beacon lights should be on. Nav light should have been on already. Oak shit is on. That looks good. Thrust is in cutoff, and let's go ahead and fire up engine number two. Okay, and one rotation and two rotation. Fuel coming on. Lovely sounds. Okay, we got all pressurizing, fuel flow coming on. Temperature looking good, oil pressure in the green. All right, engine two is stabilizing. Okay, put generator on and let's fire up engine one. Okay, looking good. And one and two, fuel coming on. Oil pressure coming up. Here goes the fuel. Temperature in the green. And two coming up. Oil pressure in the green. Lovely. Now that looks like two good starts. Let's put the uh, left generator on as well. We'll get rid of the GPU. We'll set flaps 8 for takeoff. We'll set takeoff trim. Cabin air is coming on at this point. Cabin climate is going into fan mode. We'll put pyro heat on. Let's put on windshield heat on as well. It's not exactly cold out here, but it's not exactly warm either. And let me close the door. I don't want anyone looking at me. Red radio altimeter, autopilot master, all of that coming on at this point as well. Okay, stall warning. It's coming online. All right, we're good to taxi. Let's release the parking brake. Let's disconnect steering lock. Takes a little bit of power to get it going. But also keep in mind that we're at almost 7,000 feet above sea level right now. So, right, we'll make a right turn over here. And we'll make a left turn. And we'll taxi all the way to the end. It's uh, it's actually a very weird runway out here. It's 8,200 feet long, but it's actually a very, very narrow. I don't know what's up with that. And here we are pretty much coming up on the runway. Assuming we have been cleared for takeoff. Let's put recognition and strobe lights on. Put landing lights on as well. I'm also going to need air ignition for takeoff. Let's arm the thrust reversers. 
a tricky thing you have to do in this airplane is enable the yaw damper, which is down here. One of these two buttons. And it's very tricky when you're flying. You have to actually look down and press a button and you have to do it pretty much immediately after you take off and very shortly before you land. Okay, let's uh, line up on runway 14. Hopefully. Yep, 14 it is. So here we are. Let's disable steering. And we shall get out of here. Let's see here, I'm gonna need about 92% and 1. So roughly there, just a little bit too much. Thrust set. And 93, 92, that's fine. Thrust set. 80 knots. This thing's a rocket. We do not want to take it off in this thing with full power. It is a rocket. V1. Or rotate. A V2. And away we go. Positive rate. Gear up. Okay. Away we go. Now. Let's do the yaw damper. There we go. That's taken care of. Let's reduce thrust yeah, to about 90. 89. To about 89 for climb. 88, 89 is fine. Get rid of the flaps. Hey, let's adjust our thingy here. And going to enable that. Arm the altitude selector. And I'm going to put it into VS mode for now. Let's engage the autopilot. And let's actually uh, start turning on course here. All right, since we're airborne, air ignition can come off. Thrust reversers going off as well. Let's watch the airspeed here. Hey, okay, let me just uh, intercept the ending there. Let's disable VS mode. It's a little bit of a handful to fly, but uh, it's quite fun. Okay, we're above 10,000 feet. Let's accelerate to about 280 knots at this point. We can also put off the landing lights and the recognition lights. Okay. Let's watch the, uh, watch the airspeed. Watch the vertical speed. Okay, almost there. Okay, about there. We'll put the indicated airspeed mode. And let's set the cruise altitude. And we are cruising at flight level 410. No, too far. There you go. 410. I'm just going to intercept the GPS scores from here. Since uh, this is mostly default P3D GPS, it's not very functional. I'm pretty sure if I uh, proceed direct to a waypoint from my flight plan, it's actually going to erase the rest of the flight plan. So that's not something I'm going to do. A little bit bouncy out here. A uh, little bit bouncy. You have to watch the power as well as you climb and one reduces. So you have to keep adding a little bit at a time. Let me go ahead and put the uh, stabilizer and wind heat on. And we can see the uh, little gauge down here. The actual marker starts going towards green, which is good. Almost intercepting the GPS course. Let me go ahead and uh, put the nav mode on and uh, it captured right away. So that's good. Pressurization looking good. Everything looks perfect as we climb out of here. There's our flight plan. We're basically following the Juliet 8 and uh, Juliet 72 Airways all the way from Las Vegas to Las Vegas, apparently. I thought it was kind of funny. This airplane is a little bit of a handful to fly, as you would expect from, uh, from an aircraft its age. Not a whole lot of automation going here, so you have to keep an eye on a lot of things. And autopilot is a very primitive I mean, it's not DC-3 primitive, but it's it's not exactly it's not exactly a 747. And one coming down a little bit. Let's uh, keep adding, roughly keeping it about uh, 89 or so. Climbing at 2,000 feet a minute through 24,000 feet. Now that is a rocket. That is a rocket, I tell you.
approaching 29,000 feet. Let's keep adding the power. See what I told you. Keeps going down. There it goes into Mac mode now. So it's going to keep roughly 0.7 Mac, which is uh, roughly what I was aiming for. So that's perfect. On the way there, we should be able to see some of the Grand Canyon. And we should be able to see Hoover Dam as we approach Las Vegas, Nevada. Still climbing at 0.7 Mach. As you can see, we were actually doing 280 knots airspeed. Now we're 245 and uh, dropping, but yet we're still 0.7 Mach. So that's the point of that. Okay, engine power keeps... Uh, and one keeps dropping. Let's keep adding it back. You have to be on top of things here, you see. Right, how's pressurization doing? Yeah, so we have set 41,000 feet, which should put us at 7,000 feet cabin altitude, which it did pretty much. So we're good there. So roughly reset it around here. Now this city right here would be Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now this is it right here. And there we are. Airspeed mode should go out. There it goes. Altitude hold mode is on. Let's try playing around with VNAV for a second here. The VNAV page that has been added by FlySimware. It's a little bit interesting in terms of how it works. I'm not sure I completely understand it myself, to be quite fair. It seems to work every other time for me. Like right now, the active leg up here is fly by to Bucko. And if we go to VNAV page, that's Bucko right there. And in order to calculate profile to another waypoint, you're supposed to switch the active leg. But for some reason, I'm following the tutorial in it. I think it worked once for me. You select the waypoint, you hit enter, and that's supposed to activate the leg. But unfortunately, nothing changes here. I think it worked once for me. I'm not sure. I'm planning to be over Boulder City VOR BLD at about 6,000 feet and then do a visual approach for 25 left at Las Vegas, McCarran Airport. So we're cruising at 41,000 feet and in order to descend from 41,000 to 6,000 feet at 280 knots indicated airspeed at a comfortable rate of about 16, 1700 feet a minute, we need about 150 miles. Turns out 150 miles from Boulder City VOR is Bath Bay intersection exactly. Our VRAF speed is going to be 128 knots. Let's go dial that in. And I'm also going to put the ILS frequency up front of me 25 left at uh, McCarran. That would be 11175. Once we are on the visual, we're going to switch from GPS mode into, into Nav 1. And we'll use the ILS as sort of a loose guidance, especially for the vertical profile just as an aid in our visual approach. Since we do have a headwind, I'm actually going to wait on the descent a few more minutes. I do not want to descend way too early. It's 150 miles. It's a long way to go. And there's the uh, edge of the Grand Canyon. Doesn't look too good from here. Mesh isn't really loading that well because we're really far away. It's just the uh, Grand Canyon itself is really huge. So I think it's about time to start descending. What do you think? Let's go ahead and reset the altitude. 
to the previously discussed 6,000 feet. I'm gonna disable alt hold mode. And I'm just gonna gently pitch the airplane down manually. Let's gently pitch it to about yeah, 15, 1700 feet a minute. And we put the vertical speed mode on. Now the airplane is going to maintain the vertical speed. Let's reset cabin altitude to sea level. There we go. We got a nice descent rate going there. Maybe just reduce it a slight bit. This thing could definitely descend a little bit faster, but uh, I think this would be a little more comfortable for the passengers. There is another point of the Grand Canyon coming up here. I could probably set the ILS on NAV2 as well, just so I can monitor it on the co-pilot side while we are flying on the GPS on this side. So 11175 is the magical number. 11175, transfer that. 11175, and looks like nothing yet. 255 for the approach course. Let's dial that in. Here we go. Okay, we do have a little rise in differential pressure. We're gonna need to reduce the rates a little bit. You have to be on top of these things. The old damper, we're going to disengage a little bit before we land. Technically, you're supposed to do it just on short final, but uh, it's gonna be very difficult. Having to glance down there and push a button. And just about to pass through 18,000 feet. Go ahead and set the local altimeter of 3028. There we go. Right at this point, oh yeah, passenger signs have been on the entire way there. And let's go ahead and put the recognition lights at this point. At 10,000, we're going to put the landing lights on. Just a little bit bouncy as we descend through this uh, layer of clouds. Looks like stabilizer and wing heat need to come off at this point. We can take a good look at Lake Mead over here. Yeah, it's definitely bouncy here. Look at this. Definitely quite bouncy. Looking pretty thorough out there. Somehow we did manage to get here a bit early. Keep it at 10,000 so we can maintain a bit, a bit more speed. We still got here early. I was double checking the profile the entire way down, but somehow we got here a bit early anyway. Let's just level up at 10,000 for just a couple of minutes. And there's the Hoover Dam. I can see it right there. Gonna be a little more detail as we get closer. Look at the view though. Over the valley. Las Vegas straight ahead. And there's the Hoover Dam with Lake Mead. The bridge isn't there for some reason, but yeah, well, I'll take it. Cars are driving down into the river. That's fine. Fine with me. Complete change of scenery out here. Let's go ahead and start slowing down since we're really close. We're getting there. Let's start slowing it down. Let's go down to about 4,000 feet. Let's go into heading mode. Take a few degrees to the right. Switch into V-lock. There's my ILS. Let's dial into 55. There's Las Vegas loading up right there. That's fine. Right, let me do a couple of things that are going to be really difficult. Once we disconnect the autopilot, let me put air ignition on. Let me disconnect the oil damper. Like I said, it's a bit early to do that, but it's going to be really hard in a few minutes. And let's also arm the thrust reversers. That's fine, right, let me disconnect the autopilot. It's gonna be a little bit easier to fly uh, like this. Yeah, let's keep slowing down. And let's disable all autopilot modes as well. And let's go flaps eight. 
A two five left is the runway for us. So gear down, flaps twenty. At this point, slow down to about uh, one sixty one fifty. That should be perfectly fine. And doing things like arming the uh, thrust reversers and uh, air ignition and turning off the yaw damper, you have to do that on short final. And unfortunately, it's a little bit hard. It's a bit of a handful to do all those things. And let's go flaps 40. At this point. Landing light should have been on. Okay, looking pretty good. maintain about 140 knots 135 to 140 should be plenty looks like the airport is on a bit of a platform but that's what you get when your runways are flat because they're not flat in reality hey look at that I'm not I'm not I'm doing perfect 700 feet a minute at 140 knots. Don't sink. Don't sink. Oops, I'm getting a little bit high here. A little high. Okay. Let's correct that. That's fine. And we still have to roll all the way to the end, so it's not too much of a problem. Let's uh, gently put it down. Don't sink. Don't sink. Okay, here we are. Clear it. And I was actually a bit more gentle than uh, spoilers. Don't slow down too much. Yeah, let's enable steering. Let's not forget that. Otherwise, I'm not going to exit anywhere. There it is. There's the strip. It's not a very detailed ramp, but it'll take it. All right, let's pull in right here to the left. Okay. And right here is fine. Here we are. So here we are. Welcome to Las Vegas, Nevada. That was quite a fun flight. This aircraft, like I said, it's a bit of a handful to fly, but you get used to it. All right, guys, I'm going to leave this video right here. Thanks a lot for watching. Hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I'll see you guys next time.